the Sandy Lake Tragedy, in three minutes. In the winter of 1850-1851, approximately 400 Ojibwe of the Lake Superior and Upper Mississippi bands were killed because of the negligence and nefarious intentions of U.S. government officials. In the year 1842, the Ojibwe signed a land cession treaty at La Pointe, Wisconsin, in which they sold their lands along the southern shore of Lake Superior. However, American negotiator Robert Stewart assured the Ojibwe that they were only selling the mineral resources within the land and that they could remain living upon the land for the remainder of their lifetimes. However, by 1850, just eight years later, the Ojibwe living at La Pointe on Madeline Island were told that they had to remove from their homes and go west to the upper Mississippi region. The Ojibwe were reluctant, citing promises made during the 1842 treaty negotiations. Because of this reluctance, Minnesota Territorial Governor Alexander Ramsey and Indian agent John Watrous devised and instituted a vile plan to force the Ojibwe removal. According to the plan, Ramsey decided to change the location of the annual payment from La Pointe, Wisconsin to Sandy Lake, Minnesota. Then, once the Ojibwe had gathered, Ramsey intended to delay payment so late in the season that the waterways would freeze over and the Ojibwe would not be able to safely return to their homes. Through these efforts, Ramsey sought to bolster the economy in the newly created Minnesota Territory while ignoring the objections of the traders, miners, and Ojibwe living at or near La Pointe. The Ojibwe were told that they would receive their promised and needed annual payment at Sandy Lake on October 25th. By November, 4,000 Ojibwe had gathered there, many of them having traveled a long distance. Sadly, rations at Sandy Lake were limited and much of what was supplied was spoiled, causing great sickness. In just a short time, the Ojibwe began dying of starvation and disease. To make matters worse, when the agent, John Watrous, arrived on November 24th, he had no money to provide the annual payment. During their time at Sandy Lake, it was reported that 167 Ojibwe perished. The Ojibwe chief, Hole in the Day, noted that four, five, and six people died every night and day. Chief Buffalo of La Pointe said, when we left for our home, we saw the ground covered with the graves of our children and relatives. Upon beginning their journey home, high winter had set in and the streams and lakes were all frozen. The Ojibwe, already sick and low on supplies, had to throw away their canoes and set out on foot. As a result, approximately 230 more Ojibwe died that winter, all because of the ill-fated plans of Alexander Ramsey and John Watrous. The Sandy Lake tragedy was a calculated event brought about by traders and politicians who sought to increase the flow of money into their own pockets at the utter detriment of the Ojibwe. In the end, the removal effort was a complete disaster and a horrific tragedy that should not be ignored. <laughs>